Welcome back, everybody, to Chapter 4, Managing Skill Dice and Moving the uh, moving Dice Around the Play Area. Uh, generally speaking, uh, when you're viewing the player map of any one of your gear locks, you can hover the mouse over any one of the skill boxes to see a little tooltip pop up below it explaining what the name of the skill is, a, a summary of the skill. In this case, Med Kit heals any gear lock, uh, 1 to 3 HP. Uh, and uh, you might also see some additional uh, reminders. For example, I can click to enable the skill. When you just see the word click, it means left click. And uh, alternatively, I can control click to, as you know, to view the sides of the dice. Uh, I can do that uh, right now. If I just wanted to check out MedKit uh, before I actually uh, decided to commit to it, I could uh, pop up this box, view the different dice sides, hover over them, and when I do that, I see a description uh, indicating what the die, uh, what the die is, uh, whether it, it's used instantly or normally played into an active slot or an inact or a lock slot or an active ally slot, whatever the case may be, as well as a, a description of how the die functions. Um, that will be true of any time you point at a skill die, regardless of where that die resides on the player map. Uh, as usual, I can uh, left-click one of these dice to enable the skill, or I can right-click to close this window. Uh, escape key does the same thing. Uh, alternatively, if I simply knew I wanted to enable MedKit, I could left-click on the MedKit box, and now I've enabled MedKit. Uh, by default, uh, uh, as you know, in general, uh, the side of the dice that's face up on the, on the player mat generally doesn't mean anything, uh, except with the exception of dice that might be counting dice. Uh, and uh, but my program will automatically choose uh, the default face up side of a die, the a side that means something, so that you can get an idea of what the purpose of the die is when you're simply looking at it on the player mat. By the way, you may have noticed this earlier, uh, when I click on Boomer, you'll see that the program automatically knows which dice are innate to a character. So uh, when you're playing with Boomer, he automatically gets his element, casing, and fuse dice, as well as his boom counter die, which is a counter that starts at zero. Uh, there are no innate dice for Picket, but Tantrum automatically gets his rage die, as well as his counters, axe collector, and body count. So, again, the program will take care of those kinds of things for you. Let me talk about, uh, the, mention the fact that if you try to enable a skill that is not generally permitted, if I click left-click on med, med Pack, for instance, I'm going to get a message that, say, that says enabling Med Pack requires that I first enable Fast Hands because Med Kit MedPack depends on fast hands. However, you can always override that if for any reason you want to break the rules of the game uh, by right-clicking to enable a skill instead of left-clicking. If I right-click on MedPack, I've now enabled MedPack even though I'm technically not allowed to do that. Uh, but uh, again, there generally there's always a way to usually skirt the skirt the rules of the game if for any reason. Uh, who knows that uh, there, there might be some rule in the game that says, okay, now you can get a skill that uh, violates uh, the normal prerequisites for that skill. If I right-click on a skill that I've enabled, then I can delete it or remove the skill. Let's say I enabled uh, fast hands and I change my mind and, oh, maybe I don't want fast hands. Maybe I want to go down here and get toxins instead. I can right-click to disable, click yes, or it will default to yes on its own after a few seconds, and then and cha and, and change my mind and, and select toxins instead, whatever the case may be. Left-clicking, by and large, selects, whereas <clears throat> right-clicking, by and large, uh, removes or returns or exhausts or discards or something like that. When you're talking about dice, that's sort of, you can kind of, think about the use of the right mouse button uh, for that general purpose. Right-clicking will usually remove the die and either move it someplace else or return it or exhaust it or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> okay, so let me get rid of toxins here. And uh, let me go back and have MedKit and Fast Hands enabled for purposes of my example. 
<clears throat> okay, now if I want to move dice around my player man, I simply left click and drag them to wherever I want to move them. Uh, now, if you notice, if I hover over Medkit here, the tooltip says double click to add this die to your dexterity roll. So usually there will always be, uh, or often there will always be a shortcut to clicking and dragging just to save you the time. So if I double click on Medkit, that accomplishes the same thing as if I say left clicked and dragged on Fast Hands and dragged that die down into the roll, the dexterity roll area. Uh, either one will work. Notice if I hover over these dice now, uh, they say control click to change, right click to exhaust. Uh, remember double or double click to toggle the hold feature. You saw that uh, in the last video. Uh, but uh, if I right click this die now, it moves it automatically from the roll area into the exhausted area of my player map. Similarly, I can drag and drop a die and accomplishes the same, accomplishes the exact same thing. So let me bring these dice back into the roll area. I can also drag a die into an active slot or a lock slot. Uh, let's say I want to drag this up into an active slot. I can drop it up there and it will occupy the first empty slot of the active slots area. If I want to take this die and drag it up to any one of these boxes, it will occupy the leftmost lock slot. I can drag this die here to make it act, put it in an active slot, move that die over there to make it put it into a lock slot. So as you can see, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, once a die is up in, a, in an active slot or a lock slot, generally speaking, right clicking will automatically exhaust the die. Accomplishes the same thing as dragging and dropping it into uh, the exhausted area of your player map. While I'm thinking of it, let me point out a couple of other things. If I come back over here to Medkit, notice that the tooltip now says that this skill die is elsewhere on the mat. So obviously clicking is not going, going to enable this die, this skill die any longer. However, I can still click this box to view the dice sides for this skill. Uh, so that regardless of where the skill die happens to be, I can still uh, come back to its home area, if you will, and just review what each of its dice sides do. Notice I can't click to change, as I might otherwise be able to do if the die actually resided here on the map, but uh, so clicking will just close this window. But you always have the opportunity to come back to the skill area of uh, Gearlock and just view its skill dice. Uh, I get the same result if I come back over here and control click on the actual die. I see it six sides. But uh, you don't have to worry about where the die happens to be. Um, you can always come back to the home area and uh, view its sides over there. Also, by the way, let me go over to Boomer for a second. Remember I said that this uh, boom counter, this boom counter is a dice counter. It's a, uh, it counts up and down. Therefore, it's locked on the player mat. It never leaves the player mat. And therefore, uh, clicking just allows you to simply change the value. So if I right click, it goes up. If I left click, it goes down. If I now left click again, it'll wrap around back to the three. So uh, right, uh, right clicking, and now it's treating this die as if it were just a standard, uh, like a stat die that goes up and down, or up when you right click, down when you left click. I can still control click to see all the various sides of the dice if I want to, and I can still change the value of the die that way by clicking. So that's always an option. Okay. Uh, if I drag and drop a die onto the prep area of the player map, the area of the player map where the character's portrait is displayed, that automatically simply that automatically returns the die back to the player map. Notice that when a die was exhausted, if I hover over it, right-clicking an exhausted die does the exact same thing. It automatically returns it back to your player map. So always look at the tooltips. Uh, if you're looking for what what the different how the mouse behaves uh, when you either control click or right click or left click whatever the case may be. Okay, so I'm going to drag these back down to my dexterity roll area for purposes of example. Um, 
Now, some dice, as you know, uh, are, are treated or can be treated as an active ally die, meaning that you can move a die into an active slot of, uh, of one of your allies, of, of a fellow gear lock. You can accomplish that using this program by clicking and dragging a die, not a skill die up on the player map, but a die that's somewhere else on the player map, and uh, drag it up and hover over one of your gear locks to change the player map. I still have my mouse, my finger down on the left on the left mouse button, and now I can uh, drag and drop onto an active slot, and I basically move that die into an active slot of tantrum. Um, so that uh, let me do that one more time. Let me go back to patches. Now these dice are not active ally dice. They normally are not placed into an active slot or a lock slot for that matter of uh, of a fellow gear lock. But the program basically lets you do it anyway, and uh, it's up to you to obey the rules of the game. So uh, I'm going to left click and drag this die on top of Boomer. I'm not going to dro drop it there. I'm just going to hover over Boomer to get his player mat up. And now I can drop it, say, into an active slot for Boomer. Of course, it's not going to allow me to take this die and dro try to dro drop it into the prep area for Boomer because I can't return it back to the, the, the player mat of, of Boomer. And nor can I, uh, nor can I, uh, if I right click this die to exhaust it, it knows that it belongs to patches, so it's not going to show up in the exhausted area of Boomer. If I go back to patches, we'll see that it, the die knew where it had to go back to when it got exhausted. Uh, same when I go over here to Tantrum, if I right click this, I can't left click and try to drop it into an exhausted slot because then it, the program thinks, oh, you're trying to exhaust it into Tantrum's mat? That's a no-no. Uh, we'll talk about the backup plan in the next video. Uh, in the meantime, let me return these dice back to the player mat, and uh, I think I've shown you basically everywhere dice can be dragged. Of course, they can be dragged to the battle mat as well if you're in the middle of the battle. I will talk about that uh, when we're talking more about the battle mat. But for now, know that dice can either be on the player mat here, they can be in the dexterity roll slot, they can be in an active slot, a lock slot, or an active or a lock slot of a fellow gear lock. They could be in an exhausted slot, uh, or they could be dragged to the prep area to return them, generally speaking, back to the player mat of the gear lock to whom that die belongs. All right, that pretty much summarizes managing skill dice. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.